Slayer. One of the best metal acts to ever grace the earth. This one's a little special to myself, as it was also the video that I made for college almost 20 years ago. Dead Skin Mask. Off Slayer's fifth studio album, Seasons in the Abyss, this track has become a fan favourite over the years. For those that may not know, but this track is in relation to the serial killer, Ed Gein, also known as the Mad Butcher, born Edward Theodore Gein in 1906 in the Cross, Wisconsin. He was the second of two boys, an older brother named Henry. His mother Augusta was religious and would regularly preach to her sons about the corruption of the world and the evil of drinking and her belief that all women were naturally promiscuous and instruments of the devil. She would also read to them from the Bible every afternoon. It was usually verses of Old Testament and the book of Revelation concerning death, murder and divine retribution. Despite her abuse, Gein idolised and became obsessed with her. His father was an alcoholic. He was only able to hold on a job, regularly getting fired. He worked as a carpenter, a tanner and an insurance salesman during this time at La Crosse. Gein's father owned a local grocery store. However, he ended up selling it and the family left the city. They moved to a farm in isolation in a town of Plainfield, Wisconsin. Ed would attend school. Outside of school, he would spend most of his time doing chores around the farm. He was shy and his classmates and teachers remember him as having strange mannerisms, such as random laughter. <laughs> his mother would punish him when he made friends, and despite his poor social development, Ed did really well in school, particularly in reading. In 1940, his father passed away. Henry and Ed would now do odd jobs around the town to cover living expenses. His brother Henry began dating a divorced mother of two and planned to move in with her. He was worried about the attachment Ed had with his mother and often spoke ill of her around Ed. He would respond with shock and hurt. In 1944 he was burning away marsh vegetation on the property. The fire got out of control drawing attention of the local fire department. At the end of the day Ed reported his brother missing. They found his dead body. He had been dead for some time and it appeared that the cause of death was heart failure since he had not been burnt or injured otherwise. It wasn't until later a report that Henry had bruises on his head. Police had dismissed this possibility of foul play and in the county coroner later officially listed asphyxiation as the cause of death. The authorities accepted the accident's theory. However, no investigation or autopsy was performed. On December 29, 1945, his mother, Augusta, passed away at 67, and Ed was devastated with her death. In the words of the biographer, Harold Schepter, he had lost his only friend and one true love, and he was absolutely alone in the world. Ed Ging held on to the farm and earned money from odd jobs. He boarded up the rooms used by his mother, including upstairs and the downstairs parlour and living room, leaving them untouched. While the rest of the house became increasingly neglected, these rooms remained pristine. He would live in a small room next to the kitchen. It was around this time that he began reading pulp magazines and adventure stories, particularly in those involving cannibals and Nazi atrocities. One writer stood out, Ilza Koch. Ilza Koch selected tattoo prisoners for death in order to fashion lampshades and other items from their skin. On the morning of November 16, 1957, 50-year-old Plainfield hardware store Bernice Worden disappeared. The hardware store's truck was seen driving out from the rear building at around half nine in the morning. Bernice's son, Frank, was the deputy sheriff. He entered the store at around 1700 hours to find the cash register opened and blood stains on the floor. Upon searching the house, authorities found the following. 
a whole human bone and fragments, a waste basket made of human skin, human skin covering several chairs, skulls on his bedposts, female skulls, some with tops sawn off, bowls made from human skulls, a corset from a female torso, skin from the shoulders to the waist, leggings made from human leg skin, masks made from the skin of female heads, Mary Hogan's face mask in a paper bag, Mary Hogan's skull in a box, Bernice Wooden's entire head in a burlap sack, Bernice Wooden's heart in a plastic bag in front of King's potbelly stove, nine vulva in a shoebox, a young girl's dress and the vulvas of two female judged to be about 15 years old, a belt made from female human nipples, four noses, a pair of lips on the window shade drawstring, a lampshade made from the skin of a human face, fingernails from female fingers. All these artifacts were photographed at the state crime laboratory and then disposed of. Soon after his mother's death he began to create the woman suit so he could become his mother to literally crawl into her skin. He denied having sex with bodies he exhumed, explaining they smelled too bad. Gain also admitted to shooting 51 year old Mary Hogan, a tavern owner missing since December 1954 whose head was found in his house, but later denied memories and details surrounding her death. He pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. He was diagnosed with schizophrenia and mentally incompetent and thus unfit for trial. He was sentenced to the Central State Hospital for the criminally insane, maximum security facility in Wampon, then later the Mendota State Hospital in Madison. In 1968 doctors determined Egain was mentally able to confer with counsel and participate in his defence. His trial began on November 7, 1968 and lasted one week. He was found guilty. A second trial dealt for his sanity. Found not guilty by reason of insanity. Egain spent the rest of his life in the mental hospital and died due to respiratory failure secondary to lung cancer on 26th of July 1984. He was 77. In popular culture, Ed's story has a lasting effect on America. The first of many movies was Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. His story was loosely adapted into numerous films including Deranged. Deranged. For Christine, it was already too late. A House of Thousand Corpses. And the Devil's Rejects. He was also the inspiration for some of Hollywood's notable villains. Buffalo Bill. What's the problem, officer? Garland Green. They say the way he kill those people makes the Manson family look like the Butcher's family. Norman Bates. Why, she wouldn't even harm a fly. Leatherface. Even then, American Psycho. You know what Ed Gein said about women? Ed Gein, Maitre D'A Canal Bar? No. Serial killer, Wisconsin in the 50s. And what did Ed say? He said, when I see a pretty girl walking down the street, I think two things. One part of me wants to take her out and talk to her, be real nice and sweet and treat her right. And what the other part of him think? <laughs> what her head would look like on a stick. <laughs> this is actually Ed Camper rather than Ed Gein which you might recognize from the Netflix TV show Mindhunter. Well, that's it for this episode. Did you enjoy it? If so, give me a like and follow. Until next time on Metal History, here's Slayer. Come. I've been here all along. Not a 
Jim Ryan. Please stay a while. And I promise so.